Wednesday night gave us one of the most thrilling Dallas Stars games of the season. They win in comeback fashion 6-4 to four over the Chicago Blackhawks. And on today's episode, we'll talk about that game, even though it was a couple days ago, still feeling very, very good about it. And then we'll close out the show talking about tonight's matchup against the Winnipeg Jets, the third and final one of the season. And I'll give you my thoughts on how the return of Rick Bonus should be handled. All of that coming up on a Friday episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked on Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Friday, November 25th. And today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline BetOnline.net has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline.net is where the game starts, and I hope each and every one of you had a great Thanksgiving, uh, and obviously no episode yesterday, but we are now back with a Black Friday episode to talk about Wednesday's big comeback win over the Blackhawks and get ready for tonight's game uh, against the Winnipeg Jets, the final one of the season, but thank you for stopping by and making us your first listen of the day. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow us on your favorite podcasting platform if you do not already do so. And follow us on social media at Locked On Stars on both Instagram and Twitter, as well as my personal Twitter account at Dane Double Underscore Lewis. Now let's jump into this episode and turn back the clock just a little bit to Wednesday night. One of the most insane games we've seen that involves the Stars this season. Maybe the craziest game as far as just what happened in such a short, condensed amount of time. This really was a game that felt all but over with just about 10 minutes left. The Blackhawks were up 4-1. to one. The Stars were generating some chances throughout certain spots of the game. But ultimately, they really just could not get Peter Mrazek figured out outside of a first period Jason Robertson goal. And the Blackhawks were, you know, I don't want to say they were getting pure luck, but I mean, just some nice rebounds and some puck bounces that went their way. And they find themselves with a four to one lead looking to snap what was a four game losing streak. And then things changed very, very quickly in case you've already forgotten, which, you know, a lot can happen on Thanksgiving. You eat a lot. You have a good time. But let's relive uh, what happened on Wednesday night. Jamie Benn gets the power play goal to bring it within two. There starts to be a little bit of a buzz in the building. Still a lot of work left to do. But hey, the stars made it look not as bad as it really felt. And then not too much later, Mason Marchment beats Mrazic short side to bring it within one. A really pretty goal from Mason Marchment, one of his best of the season. And then Ty Delandria, the youngster, gets the tip in off of a Yanni Hockenpah shot to tie the game. And then Roddick Foxa, uh, of all people, Roddick Foxa, who's kind of been on a tear as of late, scoring some late goals for this team and really putting the Stars in a good position late in close games. He gets the go-ahead goal to put the Stars up 5-4. to four. And then who else but Jason Robertson uh, to put the puck in the back of the empty net to close things out and now his point streak now at 13 games he'll be looking to push that to 14 games on this night Friday night against the Winnipeg Jets and this is one of those games on Wednesday that we saw where nine times out of ten the game is likely over at four to one but Dallas they they knew what was at stake in this game they knew that they needed to get two points and they just kept fighting they kept going they knew that they had a chance Chicago was kind of sitting back on the lead in this game and Dallas found some exploits to take advantage of and they did just that and it paid off they get two points and Chicago gets zero points out of it which is even better you want to win those division games in regulation to make sure you get the most amount of points as possible and make sure your opponent gets zero points now let's take a moment and go back to Wednesday night in the Stars locker room and hear from coach Pete DeBoer as well as Roddick Foxa, Ty Delandria and Mason Marchment on their thoughts on Wednesday night's comeback win yeah, I mean those those are uh, those are special games. You know, I've been fortunate. Uh, I think this is my fifteenth year to, you know, you get one or two of those a year um, uh, that are memorable, and you know, at least 
you know, they're memorable both ways, but particularly when you're on the right end of them. When you're on the wrong end of them, they don't feel as good. But, uh, you know, we talked at the end of the second period that, you know, we, we felt there was three or four goals out there for us if we, you know, decided we wanted to come out and, and, uh, and play. And, uh, you know, sure enough, we, they were. But, you know, that's a, that's a great uh, win for our group going into the Thanksgiving break. I think, um, you know, those kind of wins galvanize you. They test your character. They test your gumption. It wouldn't be, it would have been easy to mail it in at the end of two and, and just uh, go home for Thanksgiving for, for a day before we went back at it. But we didn't and uh, got rewarded for that. Well, I, did, I, I wasn't sure because I was kind of behind the goal line. And, uh, like, I knew at least the half of the puck is in, but I couldn't tell if it's all the way in, you know. But uh, right away when I came on the bench, uh, they told me it's, it's in because they see it from this side from the video. And so I was just happy. It was a big relief and a uh, big turnaround. It's uh, even... Um, more better when uh, you're at home, you know, you can feel the fans and they're just pushing you and uh, with every goal it was louder and louder and uh, we were just going to win it for them. Got rolling, I think got the building going and uh, we fed off that. Um, we were like 4-1 with nine left and that first one kind of erupted the place and then we just took that and every line was going, every line contributed and it was a great comeback. You no, know, it was just a good team effort to come back, you know, uh, we said here in the intermission, you know, the goals are out there for us to have and we just got to bury down on them and I think we did in the third. Yeah, I think uh, just in the right spots, we were winning battles in the third there and uh, it was making us making it easier for us to transition and uh, and uh, turn the offense there. Uh, you know, any, anything's possible, I mean, uh, last year, um, you know, we had a lot of comeback wins in the in the Florida there, and you know it's just all about staying positive and uh, sticking with it. There was just a, an, a great immaculate energy in the Stars locker room after this game. You could just tell how pleased and excited everyone was after this game. It's one of those games where I mean, you you're riding high, you feel incredible after winning it, but then if you lose, it could crush you and maybe even set you back. And I I feel like maybe this is a turning point in a bad way for the Blackhawks season now having lost five straight and to lose in such a demoralizing way. But on the Stars end of things, I think it's the exact opposite. I think this is something that you can, you know, in the grand scheme of things of this season, look back on and say this was the moment where this team really started to hit its stride. This Stars team has looked very good through the first month and a half of this season. But you look at a game like this, you look at a third period performance like what we saw on Wednesday night. And I mean, it, there's not much more you can do to generate momentum for your squad. Uh, and it was just absolutely incredible for the fans. The, I mean, the building, a sellout crowd at the American Airlines Center, absolutely electric uh, with every growing goal that went into the back of the net and you know Dallas got some downtime yesterday on Thanksgiving and now you better believe they're going to come to American Airlines Center tonight locked in and ready to go this is going to be another intense jet stars battle you got the old coach coming back into the building you're displaying the new reverse retros going to be a very very fun night and you just got to believe after getting some downtime the stars are going to be very excited and very prepared to strap it back on put the helmets on the pads on and be ready to go against this jets team well we're going to take a quick break but when we come back we will continue to talk about wednesday's win and key in on one specific player tied to landria and talk about the impact that a veteran is having on his development more on that after a quick break Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. They've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. They are always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action happening around the sports world. You can bet NFL football, college football, NBA, NHL, bet it all at betonline.net. Betonline.net is where the game starts. We're keeping this party rolling on this Friday episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day. Please, if you're watching on YouTube, do consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you're listening on audio only, please do consider hitting the follow button on there and giving us a five-star rating and review. 
helps the show out a ton. Just consider it a nice little Black Friday gift, except this gift, you don't have to pay anything. You can just press a few buttons. It takes a couple seconds. Helps me out a ton. Helps the show out a ton. Truly do appreciate the continued support. Now let's continue to talk about how exciting Wednesday night was and exciting for a lot of different players on the team, a lot of guys contributing to the comeback. Several different goal scorers, several different guys getting assists on those goals, but one guy in particular had a big moment, and it just felt very poetic. Uh, the goal that he scored, the way he scored it, uh, based on some things that had happened earlier in the day, and I'm, of course, talking about stars forward Ty Delandria who is continuing to have a very good productive season, especially given this is really his first official regular normal season in the NHL. He did play two years ago, kind of in the condensed COVID season, but that's such a weird circumstance. It just feels like a fever dream at this point. This is a normal NHL schedule, NHL workload, and kind of his first go about uh, with, with normal circumstances, and he's playing very well and performing very well. He nets the tying goal in Wednesday night's contest. He kills penalties. He was on the penalty kill uh, on Wednesday night for about three minutes, just under three minutes, shorthanded time on ice. And that was another nice part of Wednesday's game is penalties were not too big of a factor. Each team with only nine penalty minutes, the Blackhawks go 0 for 2 on the power play, and the Stars go one for two. And you look back to Wednesday morning at Stars Morning Skate, and Ty Delandria was seen and videoed working with Joe Pavelski in front of the net, where we all know Pavs has made his living in this league. Several different other Stars media members tweeting videos and pictures of this happening because, I mean, you see it every day. If you, if you, see the pictures and videos or the reports from Stars Practice, Joe Pavelski, the first guy normally out there on the ice, or one of the last guys to leave, staying in front of the net, working on redirects, tip-ins, rebound shots, uh, and, you know, I mean, that's just what he does. You look at the majority of goals in Pav's career, it's goals like that, those greasy, gritty, hard-fought and hard-working goals, or just positioning your body or your stick in the right way to get the puck, uh, you know, going a different direction, and then eventually into the back of the net. And Delandria was working with Joe Pavelski uh, on Wednesday morning before the game. And then you look at the goal that he scored. It was actually a Yanni Hockenpah shot uh, that was deflected off of Delandria and then eventually made its way past Peter Mrazek. But enough for me on this. Let's actually listen to what Ty Delandria had to say about his goal and about his time with Joe Pavelski. And then we'll also check out some audio from Pete DeBoer. Uh, DeBoer and Pavelski, of course, having a ton of history with San Jose and now here in Dallas. DeBoer had some thoughts on the Delandria-Pavelski relationship as well. So Ty Delandria and Pete DeBoer right here. Just trying to get a tip. Yeah, it's just like instincts. Um, just been like working with Joe. Um, that one, you know, wasn't even off the blade or anything. It was just kind of instincts. Try to get a stick or something on it whenever I can. So um, those touches, you know, in the morning stuff definitely help. And yeah, just trying to get a stick on it. Um, getting in the right places um, to get those, to get available to get those tips. Uh, and then just like feeling it, you know, it's, you see a puck coming that fast, uh, working the hand eye to make sure you get something on it. And, you know, not enough to stop or anything like that, but just get, get a little moving. So uh, he kind of just grabbed me. I'll say three, four games ago, once we got home, I guess, and uh, just been working on that. Like, we get an opportunity in tight. Um, that's where he's made a living, right? It's so good around the net. Um, so, yeah, just trying to get a touch on it. Um, get used to that feeling of, you know, getting your stick out there and, and making it move. This this morning was just kind of raising it in tight. Um, that's mainly what we're working on and finished with tips. So, um, just all reps. You know, he's... Like I said, he's made a living of working on reps. He's, it's not the first year he's out there really practicing. He's doing it every year, accumulated over a bunch of years. So um, that's why he's so good and still producing at this age is he works on it every single day. Getting a lot of good advice, but but he's smart enough as a young player to to use the resources around him. That's what I like about him. He, he's, you know, he, he's recognizing uh, the wisdom in that room from different guys, and he's he's using that, which is, you think that would be normal, but it's not. Not a lot of times that's the case. Joe does that on his own. You know, he was looking at his shifts. Um, you know, he's uh, he's. I, I think I've talked about his him being an extension of the coaching staff, and I think uh, you know as as he's. Uh, come into the twilight of his NHL career. I think he's he's really taken a, a hands-on approach. And when you talk to him, you know, I think he feels it's payback for what he received when he came in from some of the guys that, that worked with him. This is truly such a unique relationship 
on this team and, and one that maybe, you know, not a whole lot of people saw coming or maybe not too many, you know, could recognize initially because you look and Ty Delandria has played a lot of this season on a line with Jamie Benn, who is another great veteran presence to have. But as far as working on skill set and offensive ability, Joe Pavelski is a great guy to work with. And, it, and it's such a good, healthy relationship that we've seen from these guys so far. And really cool to know that, you know, Pete doesn't have to put Joe onto these things. These are things that Joe notices and, you know, takes the initiative, puts it on himself to watch out for and take care of these young guys to help them, you know, utilize their game the best way possible in order to help put the team in positions to win. Uh, I mean, you look at the work that those two guys are putting in at practice and morning skate, and then you see it come to fruition on the same day that videos and pictures release of it. You see the work, you know, bear fruit, which was fantastic for the team. And I mean, it, I mean, it would have been great regardless in any situation, but especially given the circumstances that the stars found themselves in at that particular moment in the game, needing a goal to get things tied up. And Delandria makes a very smart play. And it's just cool to think about because you think, I mean, just imagine, you know, 15, 20 years from now when Delandria, hopefully Ty Delandria has a long and happy, healthy, successful career. You look at the end of his career and, you know, maybe he's won a few cups, Maybe he's a potential Hall of Famer. Maybe he's just had a very, you know, great and efficient career, similar to that of Joe Pavelski, who I think is a Hall of Famer, unquestionably. Uh, and then, you know, you look and you you can point back to this moment in time, early in Delandria's career, and you can say, look at the impact guys like Joe Pavelski had on his career overall. I mean, several years from now, again, hopefully 10, 15, 20 years from now, at the end of Delanger's career, you can look back and say, this is where it all started. The work that he put in and the help that he got from veterans like Jamie Benn, like Joe Pavelski. I mean, these paid huge dividends for him and were such a crucial part in his upbringing in this league. And so I think it's really cool. We could potentially be seeing the next Joe Pavelski in the league, a guy who's going to score goals in front of the net. And maybe we'll see him pass it on. Maybe 10, 15 years from now, we see Ty Delandria taking young players under his wing and showing them how to work in front of the net to score goals and put your team in successful positions. I mean, that's what Joe Pavelski did. Pavelski was the beneficiary of older players taking him under their wing and showing him the ropes and teaching him how to be a pro on and off the ice. And I mean, it's hard to imagine a much better NHL mentor than that of Joe Pavelski, one of the most beloved players across the entire league on and off the ice. But Ty Delandria, a very special player, still not definitely not at his peak. The best is yet to come from him, but we're still seeing a ton of really good output from number 10. Well, we're going to take one more quick break, but when we come back, we will shift our focus to tonight's game, the final meeting between the Stars and the Jets, at least in the 22-23 regular season. And with it comes a little bit extra incentive. The Stars, of course, displaying their new reverse retro jerseys for the first time, but also Old coach Rick Bonus comes back to town for the first time since becoming the head coach of the Winnipeg Jets. More on that after one more quick break. All right, let's close out this Friday episode of Locked on Stars. Stars and the Jets, they play for the third and final time tonight in this regular season, which is kind of a shame, if you ask me, because these teams played four contests against each other last season. All of them required either overtime or a shootout. They were physical. They were intense. Some of the best games of the season. And now, I mean, three games is still a lot, but the Stars are playing all three games against the Jets before December. And I guess that's just the way the cookie crumbles this time around. And maybe, just maybe, we'll, we'll get a playoff series between these two teams. You never know how the West is going to shake out. And a best of seven playoff series between these two squads would be highly entertaining and very, very fun to watch. But let's focus specifically on on tonight's game. A lot going on, not just a game on Black Friday. Of course, as I've mentioned a couple times now, and as I'm sure many of you know, this is the first game that the Stars will be wearing their brand new reverse retro 2.0 jerseys. I think they're very good. I think they are a huge upgrade over the first reverse retro jerseys that they've had, and I am very excited to see them on the ice. But of course, the biggest storyline coming into this game is, of course, the return of former Dallas Stars coach, Rick Bonus, who was not able to come with the Jets team back in October when they first came to the American Airlines Center due to COVID-19 protocols. Stars play against the Jets and Bones in Winnipeg a while back and lose, but now Bones and the Jets come into Dallas for the final time this regular 
season. And they are 11, 6, and 1. And in their last contest, they got absolutely pounded by the Minnesota Wild by a score of 6 to 1. But they still have some really good players. And of course, we all know from watching them this season that this Jets team is dangerous and can do a lot of damage with a very talented, top heavy, loaded roster. Uh, Norris Trophy sleeper at the moment, Josh Morrissey, defenseman for the Jets, having a great season leading the team in overall scoring with 18 points, 3 goals, 15 assists. The leading forward is Pierre-Luc Dubois with 8 goals, 8 assists on the season. Kyle Connor always a threat, a sniper for the Jets, 5 goals, 10 assists. You of course have Mark Scheifele, you have Blake Wheeler, and then at the center of it all, you have Vesna candidate Connor Hellebuck, who 8 4 and 1 with a 2.07 goals against average and a 9.35 save percentage. Again, we, we've talked about this team. You guys kind of know the drill on what this team brings to the table. Those of you that have been listening to the show all season, or, or those of you that have watched the games against the Jets and look at the NHL stats, they are not the most explosive offensive team. They kind of find themselves near the bottom of the NHL as far as offensive statistics and the amounts of goals scored, but a huge reason that they continue to win games and continue to be near the top three in the Central Division is because of Connor Hellebuck. He has been nothing short of spectacular for this Jet squad this season. He's won a Vesna Trophy before. He's been consistently one of the better netminders in the league, and he is at the peak of his game, it seems, this season. And he is playing very, very well. And it's a, the Jets are a tough team to beat when he's on his game, and then when guys like Norris, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Connor, Shifley, Wheeler, when those guys are all on as well. This is a very difficult Jets team to manage and hang with. But again, the biggest storyline, Rick Bonus coming back to town. And that's kind of what I want to close out this segment, close out this week's uh, you know, shows on and this show in particular. Uh, I'm very sad that I won't get to be at this game. I'll be back home with family throughout the weekend, uh, which I'm excited for. I love my family. I love spending time with them, but I'm, I'm kind of sad I won't get to be at this game. One, to see the new reverse retro jerseys in person. I'm sure they're going to look great on TV, but they're probably going to look even better in person. But I'm also just very, very curious to see what the crowd reaction, what the crowd response is to the return of Rick Bonus. And my fear is that people, it's going to be negative. I'm afraid a lot of people are going to boo, and, and it might not be that great. I imagine you know there will be people that cheer, but if you'll indulge me, I, I would like to present a case for why you should not boo Rick Bonus. whenever I imagine there will be some sort of tribute video in a moment to recognize that he has returned, uh, and some sort of announcement made, I'm sure, by Jeff K and the media team. Uh, just think about what Rick Bonus, what his era in Dallas looked like. He comes in, for Monty after he gets fired in December 2019, takes over the team. The team does pretty well. The season stops because of COVID in March 2020. Things pick back up in the bubble in Edmonton, and the Dallas Stars, led by interim head coach Rick Bonus, make it all the way to Game 6 of the Stanley Cup Finals. They unfortunately don't win the Finals, but it's always difficult to get to the Finals, and of course difficult in the middle of a worldwide pandemic where you've been in the same city, in the same hotel, same building, same practice facility for what, two months about, or, you know, maybe a little bit less leads the team to a Stanley cup finals appearance where they were only two games away from winning the next season, a plethora of injuries to the roster. Some of the best players unable to go. Tyler Sagan misses the majority of the season. Anton Hudobin dealing with injuries. Alexander Radulov, Jamie Benn. I mean, a ton of guys, a ton of veteran guys, not able to be 100%. Some of them still playing regardless. This team, with a lot of youth mixed with some injured veterans that, you know, they, they did pretty well. They were competitive. This team was on the fringe of making it to the playoffs in a division that boasted the Nashville Predators, who were a playoff team, the Carolina Hurricanes. They were a good team that season. And, of course, the eventual Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning, also in the same realigned division as the Stars that season. Rick Bonus, the coach of that team, nearly leads them to the postseason after – Everything I just talked about, injury, shorthandedness, crazy schedule, condensed schedule, having just come off a run from the Cup. Then the next season, the Dallas Stars, not the most perfect season, not, not a great season on paper, but they Stars find a way to compete in a very chaotic Western Conference. It, it comes down to the last handful of games, but the Stars find a way to outlast the Canucks, the Jets, and the Vegas Golden Knights, and they clinch a playoff spot. Not only do they clinch a playoff spot, they find a way to clinch the seventh seed, the first wild card seed, and avoid a date with the Colorado Avalanche that almost assuredly would have ended in a sweep or a you know 
maybe five games in a series. And they go to seven games against the Calgary Flames. Johnny Gaudreau, Matthew Kachuk, Lindholm, Markstrom. I mean, a great Calgary Flames team. They go to seven games against that team led by Coach Rick Bonus. So just think about that. These two and a half seasons, just think about what Rick Bonus did with the hand he was dealt. A worldwide pandemic, a condensed schedule, having to start a new season just a handful of months after getting done with a crazy and chaotic Stanley Cup run. I mean, just think about it. He was a good guy, never treated anyone with disrespect. Sure, he showed emotion on the bench every now and then, but he treated his players with respect. He treated the media with respect. He, I mean, he was a, a, everything you could want in an NHL coach. He was passionate. Was his style of coaching maybe a little bit outdated? Sure. Did he do everything perfect? Absolutely not. He was not a perfect coach, but he was a great guy, a great human being who loves hockey, loved this team, loved the guys on the team, and, and just had a little bit of a different style. So if you ask me, it is not worth booing Rick Bonus. So if you're at the game, I encourage you. It doesn't even have to be crazy cheering. Just clap a nice little round of applause. That's my two cents on the matter. I'm not saying he deserves your adoration or you drooling over his time with the Stars, but I do think that Rick Bonus at least deserves your respect for what he did for the Dallas Stars in his brief time as head coach of the team. But that is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you for letting me go on my rants, for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Hit the follow button on your favorite podcasting platform. Leave us a five-star rating or review. Helps the show out a ton. And we will be back on Monday. We'll be talking about some of the games from the weekend. The Stars will be playing Saturday in Colorado after tonight's game against the Winnipeg Jets. And then on Monday, uh, we'll be getting ready for a game against the St. Louis Blues in St. Louis. So a lot on tap for the Stars and a lot on tap for the Locked On Stars podcast. But thank you guys again for tuning in. Enjoy your Black Friday. Enjoy your weekend. And we'll see you back here on Monday. <laughs>